Greetings, Noose Little Pod listeners. This is your host, Matt Gore, reminding you to please like, follow, subscribe, and share the podcast on your available podcast apps such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and any other podcast app you can think of. Share our episodes on Facebook and let us know what you think with a comment or review. Now please enjoy the show. Good evening and welcome to Noose Little Podcast. This is an audio program talking about the backstage antics and stories of running a small town community theater on the banks of the Noose River located in Smithfield, North Carolina. We lovingly refer to the old girl as the Hut. We hope you enjoy. Good evening and welcome to Noose Little Podcast. We have a very special show for you this evening. We are recording on the stage at NLT, otherwise known as The Hut. And it's that's why it sounds a little bit different. So we've been doing some audio recording for BLT's upcoming production of Clue. And Mita was kind enough to let us borrow the audio equipment for that, so we thank her. Um, today, On today's episode, I have two guests with me, and they are the head honchos at BLT, as it were. I have with me the artistic director, Jerry Keith Lyles. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. And making his third appearance on the podcast, uh, Mr. D.H. Johnson, form, uh, board member, uh, former co-chair, and uh, actor at large, local Lothario, whatever you, you know, fill in the blank there. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. This is my favorite podcast I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's my only podcast I do. Um, well, we like having you here. But we're going to talk about uh, different things today. Uh, but first, we would like to mention that NLT, as per usual, has a show coming up. It's the second show of our 49th season. Thank you to the excellent uh, turnout for Willy Wonka. Six sold-out shows, Wonka bars were sold, uh, golden tickets were received, and a good time was had by all. So thank you to uh, the cast and crew, Sean Braswell and company, for putting on a great season premiere for our 49th season here at NLT. The show that's coming up is the Charitable Sisterhood Christmas Spectacular. Now, if you're looking to get into the Christmas spirit on November 10th, 11th, 12th, 17th or 18th be sure to come and see the charitable sisterhood christmas spectacular uh please call and make your reservations we highly recommend that you do we're working on computer reservations for those of you for those of you out there that are wondering about our foray into the 21st century now that we finally accept credit cards don't worry uh computer reservations are coming down the pike but for now just call 919-934-1873 to make your reservations for this really funny holiday themed show we also have auditions. Auditions are coming up December 18th and 19th for The Lion in Winter. This is going to be the third show of our 49th season here at NLT, which goes up in February. So please, if you want to come out for a nice Game of thrones Machiavellian type of uh, sniping uh, royal family drama, come out for that on December 18th and 19th. We won't start actual rehearsals into the new year, it should be noted, but if you do come in auditions, actual rehearsals won't start until the new year. All right, let's get into the show. Let's talk about the upcoming show at BLT for what season? Is there 24 seasons, correct? Yes. Yes, 24. 24th. Let's talk about Clue. Now, obviously, I am biased because I am the director of Clue, but I want to hear it from your guys. How I knew I recognized you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're the same guy I've been seeing every five nights a week for eight weeks. Um, it is coming along great, but I want to talk about the origins of it and how you decided to bring this colossus, colossus of a show to the BLT stage in Benson, North Carolina. Well, as a child, I used to play the board game all the time, mm -hmm. and that's all I knew about it. It was... Uh popular movie true. in the 80s 70s i would say that 85 it, yeah 85? it came out okay. in 85 directed by jonathan lynn however it wasn't a hit when it came out no but for those but, of us who loved rocky horror picture show and would watch anything that tim curry mm -hmm. did that's how i became aware of it was just following tim curry around. yes tim curry plays wadsworth the butler in that and he is fantastic it's prime tim curry uh fun fact though the director originally wanted rowan atkinson <sighs> to play wadsworth but he wasn't mr bean yet so he wouldn't have had the commercial viability mm -hmm. that maybe the only other person i would have accepted uh -huh. would be rowan Atkins. <laughs> yeah but uh jonathan lynn the director knew tim curry and ask him to play it and i as, did not know that. yeah that's true um 
so the movie didn't do well when it came out, but it has attained cult status ever since then. So it is popular now. It is a uh, the black comedy works very good nowadays. Uh, we live in the age of dark comedy and dark humor, and it really plays well now to most people. <laughs> Some people would disagree, but it is based on the movie. So it is a stage adaptation based on the movie, and it's a monstrosity of a show. It's huge. So let's talk a little bit about that and how. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, how how we're all helping to bring that to life on stage at BLT. And go. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's very fast paced, and it and the the fun and the problem is on stage trying to present it in a theater that you know we're a smaller theater, and we don't have fly systems, and we don't have uh, automated uh, scenic changing devices. So it all has to happen physically with old-fashioned stagehands. And it goes from room to room to room. All the classic clue rooms, the conservatory, the study, the billiard room, room. The billiard room, yeah. which needs a pool table Yep, on a small stage. What, what, Lots what of slamming doors and windows and disappearing things and appearing things. and yeah. I have to give credit to the, uh, uh, d the designer of that. Uh, Nate, Nate designed that stage, and he uh, he's the technical director over there. And I did have a alternate design that I had at our, in our first meeting, but it quickly became apparent that that design was not gonna work. Mm -hmm. So me and Nate and the powers that be decided to let Nate do that, and he really came out with a great looking set. I'm very I'm very impressed with it so far. It is beautiful. Yes, it looks really great when it's the lighting is. That's the last step. We haven't even seen at this point, right. really. Uh, when does this air? This, oh, it's going up before the show, buddy. Before the show. So okay. next week. So by the time this airs, we will have seen the lights on yes. it. And he's a, he's a marvelous lighting he's, designer. There's nobody better than Nate. Um, and the polish that you see, uh, those last little touches that he puts on right before we open, it just it makes everything come alive in a way you can't believe. Yeah. yeah. It's... Um, it's been it's been a pleasure to work with you guys. It's, it's been a real smooth process. I've never heard no from you guys, and I've never heard like no, we can't do that or something like that. You guys have always risen to the challenge. If well, I've had a, I mean, we can't. Not in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to talk Matt out of that idea talk right now. That quick. Yeah. Um, no, I told. Uh, I, there's this bit uh, with the bodies and how they're moving around bodies, and it's a moment of high comedy in the play. And I don't want to spoil it for you. But I told I told the crew at the beginning I'm like I want this to go so far that when my fiance Tamara sees it she's going like damn it I should have been here to rein you in, so <laughs> so and I think we've achieved that there there is some moments of uh, uh, shocking comedy as it were during the bits uh, where bodies are ha spoiler spoiler there are bodies in the body manner in the in the household um, we should mention the dates of this show tickets are fifteen dollars and you can get them at bensonlittletheater.com that's right. Um, all right. It's the 14th at 7.30. That's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday the 14th, 7.30. Uh, Sunday the 15th at 3. Three. And then the following weekend, Saturday the 21st at 7.30. And Sunday at 3 on the 22nd. So that is four shows. Tickets are... Did I just mention the ticket price? Mm -hmm, My mm -hmm. bad. All right, 15 so. for adults, 10 for 12 yes. and under. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, those are four shows, and please make note there are no Friday shows, but there are uh, four shows, and we would, $15 is a steal for this show. Anytime you go out to see any play in our area, even here at the Hut, it's going to be over $20, or $20 or over. Mm -hmm. So $15 is a very, very reasonable price for this production. It's a Class A production. This isn't the high school version. I just want to point that out. This is not the musical version. This is not Clue the high school version. This is the full on adult version with the falling chandeliers and the uh, and the hidden safes and all the little accoutrement that you remember from the movie. Mm -hmm. That was the thing I was wondering about. Do you think you guys know Benson's audience better than I do? Mm -hmm. I'm a guest director, but. Do you think they know it's based on the movie, or do they just assume it's Clue the board game, something with that? Well, I think in the marketing, we, we occasionally said, based on the 1985 cult film, mm -hmm. um, and we've never said it is a musical anywhere, so... Uh, we, we keep saying play, so... We keep, yeah, the, the marketing's all music, uh, Clue the play, mm -hmm. based on the movie. Yes. 
Yeah, it's a it's a big play. It's it's a it's a. I described it as, at the beginning of rehearsal. It's a musical without any song numbers in it. It's an extravaganza for sure. Yeah. yeah it's a... Let's talk about the cast just a little bit. We have a cast that comes from all uh, all over Johnston County and the mm-hmm. Raleigh area. We've got Kathy Hinton Nixon playing Mrs. Peacock. Uh, she this is her first show at BLT. She's a teacher, uh, the theater arts teacher at Corinth Holders High School, up there in what is it Cleveland? What? Where's Corinth? <laughs> I have no idea. Up north Johnston County, I mm-hmm. think. And uh, so we have Randall uh, Lawrence Hurt. I've worked with him uh, many times before. He was Valance in our last produ- our 48th season finale, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. And he was kind enough to come audition for Wadsworth. And he has been amazing. Um, the show off that he is. Uh, just come in the first day with all his lines learned. Yes. <laughs> I don't know Randall. who he thinks he is. <laughs> no, you're listening. Yes, very impressive. But he, it is it is a massive role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he is the lead. It may be, you know, about... It's so talky. Peacock he and plum and mustard. But Wadsworth, he is... He's carrying this thing. Yes. 100%. And if mm-hmm. he hadn't come in off book, I don't know how he could have gotten yeah. there. Really, yeah. The uh, amount of time. Right. He, uh, he, we always said, well, Randall's automatically good at everything he tries, except for the dancing. He did not know how to dance. So we did find his Achilles heel eventually. We had to bring in Patsy Castellano to... Uh, yeah, to, she was great. Yeah, she was great. She came in and uh, in 30 minutes uh, did a tango scene for uh, Randall and Mrs. White. Mrs. White is played by Mariana Morin, who's also been in uh, several NLT shows. She's been uh, involved in theater up in Raleigh and was kind enough to come down to Benson. Is she always a chameleon like she is in this? What I, you- I've never seen anybody transform so completely into a different person. She was white in my from, life. I can say it now. She was white uh, from the beginning. I was just like, she's the only one who. She got it was right. in the audition room backstage. Everybody who was auditioning was like, "Yeah, well, I'm not going to go in there because <laughs> she's got this." <laughs> she looks fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's just her body language mm-hmm. and her manner. She looks yeah. fantastic as white, and, and and all the costumes look really good. But when I saw Mariana, I'm just like, she transformed entirely to a different oh, yeah. person. I didn't Completely. recognize her. She she came in. I guess she arrived in costume and made up and mm-hmm. hair and I, I did a double take because I, I was same like, thing. who is th- oh wow mariana is great. total trooper that's what I, that's great about these guys they're all troopers it's not there's there's no like weak there's no weak links i i didn't i guess the word the appropriate word would be I didn't settle. You I didn't, didn't have to. Yeah, I didn't. It was it's just an incredible amount talent. of talent that came out. So, and, and this we, Plum guy. Yeah, who's Plum? <laughs> God. So, <laughs> I mean, that guy. But DH, is, I want to talk about that because that's 20% of the reason I did this project. It's, I said, you, you, we had struck up a friendship. You had come seen my work. I had come seen your work at BLT. And I wanted to work together because it was kind of, I don't want to. I don't want to sound pig-headed, or, or, but it kind of was a kind of talent recognizes talent situation. I'm like, I don't know who that guy is, but he's talented, and I want to work oh, with him. Thanks, and thanks. Um, that's how it was for a lot of the people. I, I didn't know who Randall was. I'm like, I don't know who Randall is, but he's talented, and I want to work with him. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to work with you on this, and you kind of like, oh, we're going to do Clue mm-hmm. next uh, season. At, this was about two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to do Clue upcoming at, at – BLT and I'm just like oh, I don't want to do Clue the musical I'm not the musical guy I'm just not and he's like no it's the play I'm like oh really <laughs> that's a horse of a different color so you're the through line in that I went to Gilbert Theater in Fayetteville because I liked Larry Carlisle and I wanted mm-hmm. to work with him I went to the BLT to work with you guys because I, I like I like UDH and Aww, I wanted to work with thank him. you so you're playing Professor Plum and you're playing an, a very nuanced and pr- version of Professor Plum and sympathetic version of Professor Plum. You were way more you were way more uh, sympathetic than Christopher Lloyd was in the movie. You're supposed to be like a Lothario and a ne'er-do-well, mm-hmm. but we don't want you to be. Well, I I thought about that and I thought, what if you I love I love when we take these lascivious people and find something we actually like about them. And it, I think and I, I think I try to make him a little bit. Crazy. You bring a humanity to it. Thank you. you, you Thank you. That's that's the word. Mr. Uh, Professor Plum is a human being. You come across yes. as like an actual human yeah. being. Yeah. And um, also we have 
uh, Jerry Keith Lyle's playing Yvette, you were very surprised when I offered you the role of Yvette. Very, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I had thought about it and had made jokes about what if you had this older lady playing the, the, the bimbo, and I, you know, and then I was like, huh, okay, it let's has, move on. <laughs> yeah, you, you thought I dismissed the idea? Yeah, I, I was making a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no. Uh, part of it was that you're a great actress. I saw you on stage in uh, in two plays, uh, Guys and Dolls. You were very good, but I saw you in Southern Fried Funeral, and Southern Fried Funeral was a very successful show for you guys. Congratulations, you're doing the sequel. Thank you. We're going to talk about it. In, we're going to talk about the sequel in just a little bit, but it is kind of uh, like Jones Hope Wooten stuff. Mm -hmm. So their stuff is kind of like very not not three not three it doesn't have character. a lot of depth doesn't have a lot of right. depth but you managed in in her one little dramatic speech that she has about her dead husband to bring a whole pathos and humanity to a character that i don't even know if the writers were trying to go that way i knew you were autistic directing and i knew you were going to be here on clue and i'm like well if she's going to be here she needs to play somebody <laughs> and i remembered you talking to me about it and then i thought about it and let it marinate for like a day or so and i'm like you know what i think that would be interesting because it's different it's the it's it, Yvette is supposed to be this young buxom blonde, but uh, we. What happens to the young buxom blonde when she's no longer young, <laughs> but she still needs a job? Well, she's Yvette. <laughs> yes. It kind of it kind of there's a layer. Maybe is desperation the wrong word? Not on your part as an actress, but no. The but there the is character. a desperation, and that's sort of. It's funny that you said that because when I'm on stage. I, she's desperate for the attention from Wadsworth, desperate to make sure she's got everything in place, you know, mm -hmm. desperate to get out of there. So she's just a desperate yeah. person. Yeah. You added something that I thought was really cool. Uh, you fidget with your costume a lot. <laughs> you fidget as your vet in that. And I was like, why is she fidgeting so much? And then I was like, oh, she's not used to being in a maid's outfit. <laughs> she's an imposter. So she's not used to being in a, she's like this damn outfit that Wadsworth has, mm. Wadsworth has me. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Also, I think she's uncomfortable but with being cinched and pulled and pushed up and, yeah. and the things that that costume would require her to do to mm. herself. And it does subvert. I like it how it subverts expectations because if they've seen the movie, they're like, well, they're obviously going to get a bucks on blonde for, for, but it kind of was like, oh, it's, it's, it's JKL. Oh, I saw her in so-and-so. I was like, that's interesting. So, uh, let's take a, uh, Annabeth Clark, ABC. Annabeth Clark plays mm. Miss Scarlet. Um, she is, She's great. She's one, she's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And she's very kind, and I always love to cast against type. So I wanted uh, the kind, very nice, very uh, – the girl that you bring that, that you bring home to your meet, <laughs> to meet the parents and stuff like that. I was like, wouldn't it be hilarious if she played Miss Scarlet, you know, the, the madame of the Washington area? Mm -hmm. And she, uh, she was so ex uh, scared at the beginning because she thought everybody was funnier than her. I was like, no. <laughs> doesn't that sound like doesn't that sound like Annabeth Mita? Yeah. <laughs> I was I was gonna say um, she's the reason why Stephen's coming to see the show. <laughs> see, I told you, I told you she'd bring in people. I told you. <laughs> uh. Annabeth has a following. Annabeth, yes. uh, Annabeth uh, uh, attract. Uh, she she is usually in musicals, and I wanted to put her in this comedy to kind of stretch her acting skills right. a little bit. Oh, she's doing she, a great job. She's a wonderful it. actress. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, and I've seen her do drama. She did Last Train to Nib Rock, which is a two-person show, which requires mm -hmm. a lot of heavy lifting, and she did it fine, effortlessly. You know, so I knew she could learn the lines, but I'm just like, let's put her in this broad. I'd never seen her in a broad comedy. Putnam, she was in Putnam County kind of Spelling Bee here at NLT, but that's also a musical <gasps> which plays to her strength. I was in that. You were yes, you were you, you were a contestant. You got to see the entire the entire first act from the bleachers. I did. It's also uh, well, no, I guess this is a ensemble too. I was gonna say Putnam County is more of an ensemble show. Yeah. yeah, this is definitely an ensemble. They're always once they're in, they're together on stage until the bitter end. And then we have Tony Mendez as Colonel Mustard. He's the wild card in the group. He's the one I had I really hadn't worked with before. Mm -hmm. I. Uh, and uh, you were tell, talking to me about him, about mm -hmm. how he comes from good actor Scott. And yes. he gave a great audition. He was sick during callback, so he was worried he wouldn't get it because he was sick during a callback. And, but it, that was not a problem. Tony is adding something similar that you're adding, DH, to his character, where Colonel Mustard seems like an okay guy. He just has a couple of bad habits. There's a sweetness about yeah. both of the characters that I don't think the movie... Uh, well, I can rev it up. I can be a real... 
Beep, beep, right. Beep, <laughs> if you need me to be, but but both of the characters have a sweetness. <laughs> I think is adds adds to them and makes them much more likable than maybe they were in the original script. Damn. Um, he's doing a great job. He had he has a lot. I told him to play it at the beginning. I was like, uh, I want you to play it like a really dumb Southern Confederate general, and I need you to grow like Chester A. Arthur mutton chops. And so. <laughs> <laughs> So he's kind of adding a new type of element to that. And um, we also have my brother, Justin. Uh, Justin Gorpike is playing Mr. Green. And I'd want, I had I had never really cast Justin in a role before because there was always the nepotism thing. And people were like, well, he's the director's brother. Of course he gets a good part. He's very good. Yes. He's very, yeah. very That's good. That's the thing. He also happens to be an excellent. And he's lovely to work with. So yes, he's an excellent actor. Nepotism, schmepotism. Yeah, yes. right. If he's I, right, he's right. Really I, I passed that bag. I was like, guys, I'm like, I really won't like, because Mr. Green was the one I, was one I wasn't sure about. I was just like, I'm just not sure. I'm just let's 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 give Justin a reading with it. Let's see how he does with it. And he just it just came off the page. I'm like, okay, good. I don't have to worry about Mr. Green anymore. And I passed I passed that by you guys. I'm like, is this gonna be bad? Is this a nepotism thing? Mm-hmm. But no, Justin is a hundred percent right for this <laughs> role. And really handles a lot of dialogue and the whole conclusion of the play, which is a whole thing in and of itself. It's a great scene. He's really quite good. Yes, it. yes. He can, uh, He is there. Everyone's covered in sweat by the end of the show. <laughs> yes. Do I hear the dulcet tones of Showboat starting, Mita? I think so. Over there at the amphitheater right next to us. Uh, they've recently revamped it, so they started showing movies over there, and they are showing. Uh, Showboat with Ava Gardner. Yeah, because of the uh, part of the festival. Right? It's the Ava Gardner Festival this mm-hmm. weekend. So well, they're yeah. kicking it off. Congratulations to them, but it is not helping my podcast Ooh, right it's now. It's not horrible. I just it's got a, <laughs> we've got we've got some uh, undertones going on too. So if you hear like themes from Showboat underneath, just don't sue us, okay? <laughs> 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 we also have a excellent supporting cast of uh, Maddie Lee as the cook and. Cameron Pearson. Cameron is. Pearson is the chief of police. He also plays understudy for Mustard. Mm-hmm. Muhammad and Williams. Muhammad Williams mm-hmm. is the cop. We got Zach. Uh, Zach Schultz. Sky- Schultz. I want to call him Skyler for some reason, but Zach Schultz. He was in Liberty Valance, and uh, I was uh, happy to work with him again on this. And he is also uh, he plays the motorist, but also is a backup for Mr. Green. Mm-hmm. And uh, Maddie Lee is the cook, but also plays a backup for Scarlet. So we all we kind of have like uh, just in case of you know knock on wood illness or anything like that, we have kind of a backups for yeah. almost every character. Uh, Liz, uh, let's not forget Liz, who yes. plays the unexpected cop. They gave an excellent audition for Wadsworth, and I couldn't let them walk away empty happy And mm-hmm. they are an excellent. They are an excellent addition uh, to the uh, cast and crew. And Muhammad Williams, who is quite invaluable to us at the theater, he is. Mo's a great troubleshooter. He is terrific. He fixes everything. <laughs> yes, he. Whenever we need a, if somebody's not here tonight, I'm always like, Mo, can you play this part? And he always does it. He, he always does great. a great job. Great, great, invaluable. Um, and uh, my wonderful, hardworking stage manager, Patricia St. John, and the, my assistant stage manager, Anita Massey. This is the biggest show I think I've ever done. I think there were more actual people in The Crucible, which I did 10 years ago or however long. Mm-hmm. But there's this more, has a lot of working lots parts. more going on. Keith. Oh, Keith Davis. <sighs> Keith Davis, my boy, who, uh, who I ride with every night, who literally falls asleep. And as I He's as I, driving? No, no, I oh, drive. Okay. Keith, don't tell Keith. He drives like an old lady, so I drive. And we won't uh, say anything. Yeah, he is literally a, as we record this podcast. He is literally asleep downstairs on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> he was here. Where is he? He's yeah, downstairs. I told him like we're going to be recording, so you can go to sleep on the couch because he's a hard. He's a hardworking dude, yeah. but also uh, he works hard in his real job. And um, he works hard in the theater after. He volunteers here at NLT, and he volunteers over at BLT. And he's Mr. Body. He's knocking it out of the park. So Keith is invaluable. So shout out to Keith. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, Nate Camp is uh, the technical director here. We've already talked about how he's doing an excellent job. He's risen to the challenge. He's done everything I'm asking to do, I've asked him to do. And the set is 95% done. And we put the final touch it on, touches on it this week. So, it's been a wonderful experience. 
I'm hoping everything goes smoothly. It has so far, and I don't see... I mean, it's a highly technical show, and we're about to do QDQ, so I'm sure something will go wrong, but <laughs> I am confident this group can work it out, and we're going to have a special show opening for you on October 14th. All right, let's talk about your next season. Next season, the 2024 season, is our 25th season. Um, began in 2000 with Lil Labner, and, and now here we are. Who would have thunk... Uh, we have four shows next season, Southern Fried Nuptials, which is a sequel to Southern Fried Funeral, The Hallelujah Girls, uh, Mean Girls Jr., and Freaky Friday the Musical. All right. Four shows. As you said, uh, Southern Fried Nuptials is the sequel to the very successful Southern Fried Funeral that was uh, the last show that, that you guys had there at BLT. Um, what's it like? kind of like transferring most most of the cast over into a, a brand new production. Yeah, I've never experienced anything like that Me before. Uh, I, mean, I don't even think I've been involved with any kind of sequel at all. That's a When we to realized play about musical. maybe two weeks before we opened Southern Fried Funeral and we realized that the show was actually better than it should be. Yeah. Um, we sort yeah. of <laughs> <laughs> that was so unenthusiastic. I don't know how else to say that, it. That's it's me just thinking and talking. The, the is that like um? Well, this is supposed to be crap, but hey, look, people love <laughs> well, it. Well, we just we just well, no, thought it, we just on gathered. The page, you know, there's yeah, some pa- yeah. there's some, some plays. Don't read well. They don't right. read well. They read okay, but then you know, you once have you to put the characters on stage, it, it actually a lot. some life was breathed yeah. into it, and we realized it was actually very funny and very sweet. And it was so well mm. received, and we just said, "Well, what if we just did the sequel? The what sequel. if we just do it again?" <laughs> yeah. And we just sort of took a short survey, and everybody wanted to come back. And we have a lot of candy bars and coke we didn't sell last right. year, so we'll have those again this year. <laughs> <laughs> exciting! That's Very a joke, exciting. of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's not too far away from the truth. <laughs> <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> Usually, Clue is supposed to be without uh, intermission, but you guys want an intermission because man, we gotta sell some. Uh, some we gotta sell that candy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is a. It's a big part. I mean, you, you, a, sh- a production you can sell hundreds of dollars worth of uh, anything. Oh, we know. We sold. How much did the Wonka bars bring in, Mina? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I, I got no idea. I don't know what the total was for concessions. You had to, did you personally wrap I personally all those damn every, Wonka bars? <laughs> Wonka bar. Oh my goodness! Did you put golden tickets in one or no. something? No. Well, what we did was, it started out. We decided we wanted to do something special, so we were going to put a golden ticket in a program, and somebody would win. Mm-hmm. Well, at some point in rehearsals, everybody goes, are we going to have Wonka bars? Are you going to sell Wonka bars? I'm like, no, I'm not selling any. I'm not, we're not selling Wonka bars. Well, I had extra wrappers from all the fake Wonka bars I had to wrap for the show. Uh-huh. So I threw together about 10 or 11, whatever I had left over. And somebody spotted them opening night as they were buying their tickets. And they sold all 10 of them before we opened the door. Mm-hmm. So off to the store I went <laughs> and just office depot and carry to get the wrappers printed and i made 38 king size hershey bars into wonka bars oh, wow. and they sold every single one of them the next two nights and then i ended up getting the extra large hershey bars and those were four dollars a pop mm-hmm. for those and then i got the extra large ones with the larger wrappers and wrapped all of those and i think i made 60 and we sold those for five dollars a piece and we sold out. Yes, see? Every single one of them. I so think we have that one. helps pay for a show. Let, let's talk about. All right. Is there such a thing as clue bars? <laughs> we did that though when we did the musical. What? We had like because what's it's different because when you when the musical you actually play along mm-hmm. and you have like the little card and you fill it out like the game, and the winner of the at the end of the night ended up getting a Hershey bar with like our. Um, whatever character did it that night we had the like the card right that you pull out of the thing we mm-hmm. had caricatures done it we had their caricature on a on a hershey bar and they won a hershey bar that night interesting that's cute well, that's fun i didn't know that <laughs> i didn't even know you played along with the musical version i've never read the musical version script and when did you do the musical the musical version is the music's awful <laughs> <laughs> that is true that's that is true heard. i did yeah. listen to it, it yeah. um i'd have to look it up i can't remember it's probably been but uh, I remember our own Andrew Britt played yeah. Andrew Britt, who went on to broad, uh, 
be work on Broadway backstage as an assistant director. Um, he played Mr. Green. Um, I remember there were uh, Joyce was in it. I think she was Mrs. White no, or Mrs. Peacock. I was Mrs. White. Okay, Joyce I was, was Mrs. <laughs> Peacock. Did you tell him, oh. Mita? No, <laughs> Mrs. White in that one is um is the maid, right? No, yeah, she's the maid. I had to wear a French maid's costume. I was a little thinner then, but. Uh, she also there's a, a line in it about how she went away and got surgery because she used to be a mr somebody i don't know if you can get away with that now huh? or not. let's talk about hallelujah girls now that is a joan soap it is mm-hmm. it is that's going to be directed by clay boney and uh mm-hmm. i i haven't met clay but i do know of him uh he, he's done some productions with parent uh center stage theater in goldsboro you're and, right yeah it's, there's he, a lot with uh, samson community oh okay yeah, they're the people that did She Loves Me. And mm-hmm. So, Hallelujah Girls, what's that about? Uh, it's about a group of women who decide to go into a, an abandoned church in their community and start sort of a spa, and it's called the Spa Di Da. And it's, a, it's very much like Steel Magnolias. Oh. So this might be reminiscent of like uh, they're Very all much. like uh, they, what is it called now? Sweet Li- Sweet Delilah Swim Club mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, um, the Savannah Savannah Sipping Society. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're all all right. women productions. Right. Right. Those are u- usually their better ones. Mm-hmm. I'm, so, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, it, I don't mean to bash the beloved Joan Soap Wooten. I, I that think according, it's a funny script. According to their website. It, they'll let you know that they are America's favorite comedy writing trio. If you don't believe them, ask them. <laughs> they will tell you about it. <laughs> they have a plaque that says so. That's right. See that? America's, we put it on our website. America's favorite <laughs> comedy writing trio. That's it. All right. They're, they're all female shows tend to be a little more deep. Yeah, they have, de- they have a little yeah. bit more depth. Yeah. yeah, someone has cancer or someone died. Well, and this show starts out, they've just lost uh, a very good friend within their group mm-hmm. uh, to an unexpected death. And so one of the characters says, I'm not going to waste my life doing nothing. I'm going to do what I've always wanted to do, and I want a spa, and this is what I'm going to do. And so it sort of does come from the group experiencing uh, a tragedy yeah. and, and it giving them new life. To mm-hmm. All right. Speaking of uh, a group of women experiencing a tragedy, your next one is Mean Girls Junior. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, obviously, the junior version of the musical so, based on the film. So we we're looking pink for, on Wednesdays. That's right. So we're looking for people under eleven to eighteen okay. is our cast, mm-hmm. and that will be presented in the summer as in a what we would normally have a summer workshop slot in, and instead of uh, a workshop where the students come in, pay to do the workshop and do the production. We're going to hold this just like uh, an audition for a show. This will be a main stage play. P- put um, it into our main stage lineup, mm-hmm. uh, charge tickets just like we would any other show. But it will rehearse in the same kind of hours that a summer workshop would have. So it's a, uh, is it two or three weeks? I think, it's, I think a, it's three weeks. Three they weeks. Have. They'll be there morning into the afternoon rehearsing the thing to put the whole show up. In three Interesting. Weeks. Yeah. yeah. We haven't tried something like that. And I thought one night, I thought, well, let's do it. Let's see what happens. I, I have found that kids are better at remembering lines. Yeah. So. <laughs> They are much better, aren't they? Yes. You underestimate how fast they can learn something. Not only theirs, but everyone else's. And that will be directed by Bridget Sobrinas, and yes. uh, she's lovely. I, I worked with her on uh, uh, Putnam County Spelling Bee, and she's working backstage on... Uh, her and her husband, Eric, are working backstage mm-hmm. on Clue, and we thank them for that. They're doing mm-hmm. an excellent job. All right, so... What is the next one on your list? And then the last show of the season of 2024 will be in October. That is Disney's Freaky Friday, the musical. Full on, not a junior version, but the full musical. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be directed by you, J.K. That will be directed by me. Mm -hmm. Um, That's the movie based on uh, the the body swap with Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan. Mm -hmm. The original, I think, was Haley Mills. Oh, originally it was Barbara Harris. Not Haley Mills. Two-time Oscar winner, uh, Jodie Foster. (laughs) Jodie Foster. That's right. I was like, I see her in my head. I, right. Yeah. Late 70s, 77, 76, mm-hmm. 77. Was this before or after she was in Taxi Driver? <laughs> <laughs> Around this the same time. This was about the same, same time. time. How do you go from Freaky Friday to Taxi Driver? <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Her, her agent, I'm sure, said, now that you've done taxi driving, <laughs> we need you to do Let's something. Let's dial it back a little. To, to get the kids in. <laughs> so, yeah. What a strange film is Taxi Driver. That's a whole podcast. <laughs> Such um, a strange we, film. We were talking, uh, me and Keith Davis were in, uh, in, we were talking on the way home about how the recent very popular Joker movie uh-huh. is a complete ripoff. Oh, yeah. Of Taxi Driver plus Martin Scorsese's underrated great film King of Comedy, love absolutely anybody. All right, there's not a lot of teenagers and uh, and z- uh, zennials uh, that have seen King of Comedy, mm-hmm. but if they did, they'd be like, "This oh, is wait a totally yeah. yeah. This is the Joker. It is. It's yeah. about a guy who wants to be Robert De Niro in a brilliant performance. You know." Uh, yeah, that's shocking that Robert De Niro gives a brilliant performance. He's one of our greatest actors. Um, unless he wants to buy something, and then he'll be like in like Bad Grandpa or, or Meet the Fockers <laughs> right. or something. And then he'll buy a home in Barbados. And like, he'll buy uh, he, next he, next to. He's Michael interested Kane. in buying real estate in Tribeca. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Another building. Thanks, grand, Bad Grandpa Nine. Um, <laughs> I know he was so much respected, but then he just started doing crap, and it's like, yeah. oh man. Well, he's about to be in something that. Oh, Killers of the Flower! He yeah. might win an Oscar for Killers yeah. of the Flower. Very excited I'm about yes. this. Yeah. Yes. yes, I know. This turned into the movie podcast. I don't care. <laughs> I never cared that that happens. Um, but yes, yeah, it Killers of the Flower Moon does look like it. Look, I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, but in King of Comedy, he plays a wannabe comic who is annoying, and he lives with his mom. And Jerry Lewis plays a David Letterman-ish, mm-hmm. not a terrible person, but not someone who puts up with a lot of nonsense. He's not a. He's not. It's a, it's very it's very Johnny Carson. Yeah, it's really what it was. Yeah. Charming on camera, but off camera it was all business and just, right. So he he didn't mess with. He him. blows this guy off, and he doesn't really like. You, uh, if you'd have played it cool, he probably would have gotten on the show. That's like the great twist in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually Robert De Niro kidnaps him and take him back to his mom's place. <laughs> and guess what? It doesn't work out. <laughs> and that's the movie. And then Taxi Driver mixed with that is the Joker movie. But the great twist at the end of the King of Comedy, what makes it, what propels it into be a wonderfully, uh, a wonderful film that everybody should see is that at the very end of the movie, over the credits, Arthur, I, I can't, no, that's the Joker's name, but I can't, I forget. Rupert, Rupert. Is Rupert, Rupert Pupkin. Rupert Pupkin. Pupkin. Yes, Rupert Pupkin. Pupkin. Robert De Niro keeps trying to put this tape of his jokes into Jerry Jerry Lewis's hand, like, "Oh, if you just like, listen to these jokes, I, I can get on. I can I can do it. I'm going to be a great comic, and everything's going to work out for me." And they play the tape at the very end after everything's gone to hell and he's gone to jail and all that. And the jokes are like, you expect them to be awful because Rupert Pupkin is awful. Mm-hmm. But the jokes aren't bad. <laughs> they are perfectly fine for 1985 late night talk show. They are <laughs> B plus, B minus jokes that'll do just fine. If you'd have played it cool, he would have. He would have gotten on the show. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of that's like your the, lesson, kids. Play it cool. Stay in school. <laughs> so, okay. Don't stop me anytime. Be chill, bro. <laughs> don't don't kidnap somebody. Don't be all and take them back to your mom's house. <laughs> don't be, as the kids say, extra. <laughs> <laughs> you do too much. <laughs> do yeah, doing too much. Doing too much, Rupert. Doing too much. So yeah, that's a great little movie corner. How Joker, while it does is an interesting film, is, and provide and Joaquin Phoenix is great in that movie, is a complete ripoff of two other much better movies. And then <laughs> to have him on a talk show. With uh-huh. De Niro, that's how they got legitimacy. Is they got De Niro in the root and the in the Jerry Lewis role. Yeah, that's how they yeah. got away with it. Yeah, it's it's almost as if Rupert actually made it, got mm-hmm. his own show. Yeah, even though it's not the same character. One but of the in my own little world in my brain, that's what I see <laughs> when I see that film, the, jo- the Joker. Spoilers for the Joker. There's such a great piece of audience, complete audience manipulation that I think is, that hasn't been pulled off this well in years. I'll give him props for that. But when the Joker, when he's in his Joker makeup, appearing on the talk show, having the argument with Robert De Niro, mm-hmm. and you want, the audience wants the Joker to shoot Robert De Niro, and he yeah. does. He kills Robert De Niro live on TV and then expires all of, inspires all of Gotham to be a rebel against the rich. And, you know, that's his big rise of the Joker type thing mm-hmm. is he kills this guy on TV as Robert De Niro. But the thing is, Robert De Niro doesn't deserve to die. 
Just yeah. because you're an asshole doesn't mean that you should die. But in Hollywood, it does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you talk to a PA and have a bad day, your whole career is ruined. Yeah, that's hell yeah. <laughs> all right. So, all right. That was our movie podcast for the. Re- no, just all right. So, back, uh, you got four great shows going up here next week for your 25th season, and they all look mm-hmm. fantastic. And uh, once again, we're going to give you some dates here. Clue is going up October 14th. It's going to be 7.30 p.m. That's a Saturday. October 15th for a Sunday matinee at 3. October 21st at 7.30. That's also a Saturday. October 22nd and another matinee at 3 o'clock. Go to Benson Little Theater and reserve your tickets. They are only $15, folks. Well worth the money. All right. And we also have coming up in november for nlt the charitable sisterhood christmas spectacular that goes up november november 10th at eight o'clock 11th 12th 12 uh that november 12th my birthday is a three o'clock matinee and the seven in the following friday and saturday on the 17th and 18th make your reservations by calling 919-934-1873 We certainly thank you for your time on this Friday evening. (laughs) Uh, Thank you. And we're certainly going to see a lot of each other next week going into Tech Week. Yes. Um, But this has been fun. I've enjoyed talking to you guys. Thank (laughs) you so much. Yes. We don't do the podcast like this as often as we used to. It's it's been really nice to kind of like uh, jazz back and forth with you guys. So I appreciate you coming. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Any final thoughts before we send it off into the internet oblivion? Just see theater. See all the theater you can see. Now that you don't have to worry every day about the pandemic, it's it's time to get back into the theater. Mm-hmm. That's right. A lot of great uh, into the uh, we're not. This is going to be too late to really advertise for them, but uh, Harnett Regional did a wonderful production of Into the Woods. I hear it was great. Yeah, it was, it good. was beautiful. Yeah, yes. absolutely. The set Outstanding. Looks amazing. It, it was. I, I, I think yeah. just photographs. I'm like, that's the best set I've ever seen on their stage. I've noticed a trend in the last year that um, a lot of the area actors, Wake County, Johnson County, um, and and some surrounding, a lot of actors are moving out of their home theater and going are venturing out to see other things and new talents coming into all of our theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, HRT had a lot of people I'd never seen before. So much talent mm-hmm. up there that I'd never seen before, and the same things happening every show uh in benson and it's really nice to see people trading and and you know just mm-hmm. going back and forth and not sticking to their little home theater but and we've gotten a lot of new people right not just new to us but new period mm-hmm. it seems like and so it's always nice i love new blood same same <laughs> it's very exciting it's when new people walk and, in and i love that you brought several new faces and amazing talents to to benson matt out of the core eight we call them the hateful eight um (laughs) uh the the six guests plus wadsworth and yvette yeah five of those people i think it's the first time on your stage Mm -hmm. so and um i was i was proud of that it's good to get new blood you don't want to see the same person at the same show all the time and you guys are doing a it was good to get some new blood in there because your next show is going to have the same cast that you had for the and that's great they were Mm -hmm. a wonderful cast and they deserve Mm -hmm. to go go up there and do the sequel but it's also good to have new people so you know it's just no one i'm so excited for people to like to like get a get a load of Randy and Justin and Annabeth because they don't mm-hmm. they've never seen them before. I agree. Mm-hmm. Like these guys yeah. are just killing it every like covered in sweat every night on stage. I'm just like you guys really don't know what you're in for, and that's what I'm hoping when the theater uh, when the people come to see Clue, it's like I don't think you have quite an idea of what exactly this show is going to be. It is <laughs> a very surprising show. It, I love that about it. It's yeah. um, unexpected at every turn. Cameron Pearson, this is his first show ever oh my on God. stage. Cam's killing and, it. And he's playing the chief of police. Well, no, Cam uh, was uh, a high school actor, but now that he's almost grown. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but this is the first time he's done any community theater at all since his well, high school his years. His bio said he is first time on stage. Mm-hmm. Does that mean he did tech and not on stage work? He what did one play that I saw him in. I think he was in the 10th grade. Now, okay. this is a man who's 25, okay. 26 years he's old. He's almost grown. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, he played Horton in uh, Susical, and I was one of the high school theater okay. moms, okay. and he was heartbreaking. And so I kind of, my son and myself have bugged him ever since then, 
go back on stage, you're good at this. It's so interesting because we had a couple of people out this week. It was so interesting seeing alternate versions of the characters on stage because mm -hmm. Zach is green, is not the same as Justin. He plays to his own strength instead of trying to copy somebody else. And Maddie is scarlet. It's just so different. It's just really fascinating Ooh. to watch. It's fun to be on stage with the understudies too because mm -hmm. they give different reactions and things mm -hmm. and it's fun to dig in with them as and well they sometimes know different lines yeah yeah they do <laughs> yeah yeah they're really dedicated maddie with during her 15 minute break was trying her best to get off book as miss scarlet and, uh, and i i love that dedication sometimes they give you your cues mm -hmm. sometimes yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you mean all your lines that start with oh, damn it. Oh, oh, oh. yeah all lines should start with <laughs> yeah <laughs> well all of yours do i thought <laughs> I checked the script again, and apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> Keep checking. Um, <laughs> all right. There's uh, a wonderful role for you in Cuckoo's Nest. Are you going to do that? <laughs> he said. She said there's a wonderful role wonderful for role you. For you in Cuckoo's Nest. When are you going to do that? Uh, we not the Goldsboro. CSD. Show. That's their show. They're doing that in February. We did that you can't do it ago. because you can't do it. You're directing. Because uh, if I wasn't directing, I would want to be in. Uh, you'd want to be in winter. Yeah. yeah that's Rats. A, that's unfortunate. <laughs> you can't play the king. You can't play King Henry if you're directing uh, uh, Southern Fried Wedding. Got it right. Nuptials. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, I keep I doing that too. Eleanor. But anyway. Eleanor. <laughs> hey. Hey, all <laughs> options are on the table. Um, all right, we're going to close it out there, folks. It's been wonderful. We can literally go on and on uh, talking uh, all night, but we're going to put a pin in it there. Um, I do want to give a special shout out to my fiance, Tam, who is making her directorial debut as we speak. It is literally happening as we speak down there in downtown Goldsboro. She's doing Little Shop of Horrors. By the time this goes up, it'll all be done. But I do want to give her a shout out, say, I love you, baby, and break a leg on your show, and you've done a great job. Okay, so break a leg to them. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Jerry Keith Lyles. Thank, thank you, D.H. Johnson. Thank and you. thank you, Mita, for giving up your Friday night to come and do this. I appreciate I you. I, my social calendar's all messed up now. Well, I appreciate it I anyway. I had so many plans. <laughs> you had to re which, which episode of Little House on the Parade were you going to rewatch? <gasps> I got it on DVR. I don't have to do anything. I just go home and just restart it. <laughs> just watch it again. <laughs> Blind school fire. We yay! need to have a pot. <laughs> I would do it. If you wanted to, if you would actually do it, I would literally sit down and watch the episodes fresh with you that I've never, I've never seen them before. And you, and I, I think there are podcasts who do that. I don't think oh, yeah, there a are. Idea. Oh, there are. Uh, that's okay. We can do it too. If they can do it, we can do it. <laughs> Could you just shout that again for me? What? <laughs> Blind school fire, yay! <laughs> no, no. As like, a former Little House of the Prairie watcher, you have no idea how funny that is. <laughs> oh, have you ever noticed? Here's my thing. Alice is stuck upstairs, and she takes that baby, and she, <laughs> she slams the baby into the window to break the window. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Can we get one more take on that? <laughs> well, it was the 70s. You could do things like that in the 70s. Was it an episode? We call it the baby battery room. <laughs> this is a multi-use baby. Michael this is a glass-proof baby. <laughs> Michael Landon goes, you're stuck in the fire. You have to get out. Do whatever you have to do. And she just goes, oh, wait. Does he direct the episode? So Michael Landon was the one calling the shots on this. And he's like, he literally sees it. He's done every episode, so he knows what the show's supposed to look like. And he sees the girl grab the fake baby and sling it up against the window. She's like, yeah, go with it. He's like, all right, that's good. That's lunch. All right. <laughs> And then he just steps down off his little uh, box because he always was on boxes because he wanted to be taller than everybody else. <laughs> With his purple hair. With his purple hair. Michael Landon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can't think. I, I'm, this is, I'm sure this is what Michael Landon would have wanted. It's I can't think. <laughs> I can't think of a better way to close this episode about out. Um, this has been a perfect episode of News Little Podcast because we talked about what we're supposed to talk about, and then we veered off in, into the woods. So that's that is that is prime cut podcast for you, piping hot. All right, for real this time, folks. As we're laughing about the poor baby being slinged up against the window. <laughs> We're going to put a pin in there. All right, this is this little podcast. I'm Matt Gore. That's me, the tool. Hello. All right, we'll talk to you later. Good credits for the show. Your host and creator is Matt Gore. That's me. My producer and editor is Mita Tool. That's me. Music is by Cody Walker. Uh, please go look up Cody on uh, Cody Walker Music. 
on YouTube, and he's also on Cody Walker Music on Facebook as well. He's local, so uh, and he's got a couple of albums out. You know, uh, easy listening John Vin- John Denver type of uh, guitar voice that Cody Walker. All right, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye.